Hello. Hello, Lucy. Hi, Trini. How are you? Very well. Closet Confessions this week is exciting. Why, 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 why? Tell me. Because I've got on this rail things that look identical, but they're not. And some of them are high street and some are designer. Because I just notice how many duplicates I have when I've been going through my cupboard recently. And what pushes me, Lucy, to either then buy it again more expensively or in some bizarre circumstances, buy it again cheaply. I'd love to know. Yeah, this is such a classic example of doing that. So this is the Zara jean, which most people who watch the show regularly know. It gives me a really long leg. Yes. And I love to wear it most with something with an extravagant top half because it's going to kind of put my body in proportion. It's right? balancing. It's balancing, exactly. Fine. With a broad shoulder, should I avoid a, a top like that? No, not at all, because you're going to hide it in it Got as you. it were you know yes. this gives me your shoulder yes with you it just goes yeah I'm, inside. I'm not that wide <laughs> not quite so i love this and then one day i went and discovered it again more expensively okay so hang on this top is from cost so it is high end of high street what, what price point are we talking i think here? probably it would have been like 69 something like that okay yeah. okay so it's quality but i went and found a jean which was like this jean because i'd never seen this jean high end right so okay. why would I want to be at the high end jean? Because I don't know why, but I did. So let me show it to you. What this first little story shows is that for a 29 plus 59 pound, which is yeah. 86 pounds, we had a lovely outfit. Yes. This is considerably more. This is J.W. Anderson and Maison Rav. Right. Ooh. So what it proves, Lucy, is you can get a look on the high street, albeit nearly identical. Definitely. It's yeah. about style. It's about style, but it's about, we got the volume, we got the breadth of it. Yeah. It's constructed differently. Yeah. And so why I personally chose to get this when I already have the Zara jeans is the Zara jeans being high street means they have to fit so it will fit lots of different people shapes. Yeah. I always felt it didn't fit snugly here. Yeah. This one, what I loved is it fits me like a glove here. Yeah. All right. But I felt I've got what the drama of the Zara jeans was on steroids. Yeah, this is on another level for sure. Yeah. This is JW Anderson and there's a slightly different construction. There's a little bit more volume in the sleeve. Mm -hmm. The um, cuff is longer. So yeah. I love a depth of cuff and sometimes on a high street you might get that but you might not get that real depth. Yes. Different fabrics here interestingly. Thick t-shirt fabric uh -huh. and a kind of lovely cotton which is a softer more expensive cotton than yeah. the cotton across. Yeah, I'm loving this um, and that like detail. Yeah. Something here. Gorgeous. So this I also got in the sale, but even in the sale it was two hundred and something pounds. Yeah, that's so it was expensive. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. This is a cool black trouser mm -hmm. and a white t-shirt with shoulder pads. How would you describe the? Cut? I mean, I'm now thinking that the ones I'm going to compare it to are slightly different, but I would say this is a boyfriend cut with a pleating. It's like a man's trouser, but yeah. it's actually been made high waisted. These we are costs again. Are they costs? Yeah. So cost is that high end high street, but cost is really good, Lucy, as we both know, with yeah. that cut and thoughtfulness with everything. And what fabric are they? And they're a wool gabardine, oh, and they're really? a very nice quality wool gabardine. So I'd say if you want the dupe for a really expensive designer trouser, cost will give you that. You're still paying for a high end eighty nine pound trouser that kind of price could be 60 to 75 pounds but it's going to feel like it's a 300 400 pound traveler yeah the t-shirt is zara 14 pounds 99 mm -hmm. and this is square at the bottom right all right that's a really important point for what i'm going to show you later yeah so i'd never wear it out and i could never half tuck it yeah i mean i could half tuck it but it's a sort of messy half tuck like that yeah what I made before. <laughs> this is washed about three times. So it's already gone a bit weird here. And when I wash them, I immediately take them out and I sort of take that out and stretch the shoulder pad because you want to keep the construction. And already the construction's gone a bit weird here. Yeah. That's the high street version. And I'm gonna throw something on it because I'm gonna show it build an outfit. And then on top is sequin jackets. Now I've never really bought a designer sequin jacket, so this is the ASOS one. Yeah. And what I found with this is I loved it because it is the brightest, most charming sequins. Yeah. That's kind of the plus side. What I always find with High Street is the sleeves are never long enough. Yes. Well, for your height. For my height, yes. High Street would tend to cater to five foot three to five foot four uh -huh. as an average height. And designer, I think, cater for a slightly taller average height mm. in terms of how they construct things. Yeah. 
At the back as well, there isn't much detail. There is a part flap. Yeah. But it's, it's sort of, there's no taking it in, tailoring. Which is where they're saving money. And what's going on with the The lapel, lapel? is is flops. It yeah. doesn't sit beautifully. Yeah. But the overall thing is you want to be wearing a secret jacket. So forgetting that vibe, I've got the vibe. And this is ASOS, how much was it for the whole suit? It was like 69 quid, 70 yeah. quid, the jacket. And the trousers were like 40 quid. It was okay. a brilliant, brilliant price. I've worn it endlessly, cost per wearers of it. Yeah, you, uh, 50p. you had a lot of wear out of it. Yeah. Okay. So this is a Loewe trouser, Loewe. Loewe? Loewe. Espanol. Espanol. And they don't have a pleat here, but they're sort of similar length. They're a wool gabardine. There's a little bit more silk in them, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Very nice. So the fabric, there's a roughness, but there's a better construction. Mm -hmm. So it will crease differently, less creasing yes. than the other trouser. Yeah. They were in the sale. I don't buy much nowadays full price, actually, but these were still probably £200. Okay. Which is great. Um, and from probably about sort of £600, yeah. £700. Yeah. Shape is a little bit more A line. They're going so it's like different shape. Right? So, yeah, slightly yeah. different, but the same overall. same vibe. Yeah. Now this is interesting. This is the Good American, which is actually I didn't realise owned by one of the Kardashians. Oh really? Yeah, it is. I never knew that. It was oh. at Selfridges. I think this was eighty pounds. Okay. Expensive. So high end for a t-shirt, white t-shirt, high end. Yeah. I've washed it twenty times. Okay. The shoulder is still really good. Yeah. There isn't that thing I had with the other mm -hmm. one. And most importantly for me, it's curved at the end. It's a double hem, but it allows me to tuck it in at the front at the perfect height. It's a lovely curve, and I just have it loose at the back. Yeah. It goes out here, so it doesn't feel that you sort of squared up your body. There's yeah. a curve here, which is really flattering. Yeah, you can see the difference in the quality, for sure. And the t-shirt fabric is beautifully soft. The yes. other one's quite harsh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's a lot for a white t-shirt. Okay, so hang on. Which one did you buy first? The Zara ones? I they bought were the Good American first. Oh, you did? Yeah. No, then I was like so excited Zara did it. I was like, oh my God, that's so brilliant. I remember how much that t-shirt was. Now I can get it in the high street. That was the joy. Because if you are introduced to something that you buy, designer, and you realise how much you're going to wear it in your wardrobe, right. then it's about can you find that on the high street and will it do what the other one does. Okay. So the designer version oh. of the sequin jacket. Now, when I bought this, the justification I had in buying it is I don't have a designer blazer yet in sequin, and I love sequins. This is something that I have nothing else from in my cupboard. It's by Max Mara, Sports Max. Oh, okay. Mm. It's oversized. This is an extra yeah. small. I could have even got a small. Seriously? I'll wear it over my dresses. You know, the other ones are not quite long enough to wear like over a long dress, slouchy over. Yeah. They feel too consider this is more slouch yes the sleeve length look at that sleeve length it's gorgeous it's great mm. and the back is just beautiful and longer and sits well yeah and the payettes are smaller payettes smaller and also the lapel is very good yeah beautiful i'm going to put on two big jumpers and i want you to tell me which one is more expensive okay so this first one very nice Ooh. what do you think i mean i love them both all right so i'll just tell you it's, yeah. this is victoria back Oh, really? The first one is Zara. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. But what's interesting in this is I, I like this jumper. Yeah. And this pink is a good pink on me. And the reason I bought this one is I love this one, but I felt if I was near a fire, I'd be burnt. It's such a fake fabric. It's like a £29 jumper. It's like you know, it's like you'll get an electric shock if yeah. you touch and me and I'm on a carpet. The, this yeah. is kind of wool. Yeah. Nice wool. There's no cashmere in it, but nice wool. So which one did you buy first? I bought this. You bought the Zara. So I bought the Zara one because I thought to myself, pink jumper me, no way. And I, I wore it quite a bit. And I thought, actually, I'd love to upgrade it because I, I think jumpers should feel delicious on your skin. Yeah. And I saw Victoria Beckham in this jumper and she was like this. And I yeah. thought, God, it's a pink jumper like mine. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah. And I bought it and I can't remember why I couldn't return it. Maybe I went on holiday, I ordered it, and by the time it got back, I couldn't return it because yeah. it was like 20 days or something. Sure. I thought it would be like cashmere for the price it was, and I thought it would be cozy and really comfortable, and it's quite itchy. Oh. You know, as a jumper, Shame. it's more itchy yeah. than this is. Interesting. All right, now it's warmer, mm -hmm. it's more fitted, yeah. and the fit is like, you know, it's neither floppy nor tight. It's sort of in between, so I could do that with it, but then it just looks a bit, it's it, like too long. It is a funny length, yeah. It's a funny length, because like, I don't want to do that with it because that's like what I tell every single person on the <laughs> not how not to wear a jumper. You think you're covering your tummy, it's like, oh my god, how you just made your legs look really short. So I could decide that I just 
make it a shorter jumper. I yeah. could do that, actually. Which is nice. Which is nice, so I could cut it. Well, don't do that. Yeah, I would. Well, no, you wouldn't. But I don't wear it right now. Yeah. You see, you, you keep saying, it? oh, but don't change its original form because it's Victoria Beckham. But I'm not wearing it. No, just don't cut sell it because it. it will just fray away. No, I'd get Susanna to cut yeah, it. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay. okay. But I'd make it so that I'd wear it like that. Yeah. But weirdly, if I put this on, tell me which colour suits me best. I think the Zara, I've always... Yeah, there's a bit more warmth in there. I think the Zara suits me better. Yeah. And the good thing about this one is I can kind of do that real oversize. I can have it like that. Yeah. So but that length, it's the same length kind of as the other one because it's floppier, it works. Yeah. Rather than being fitted. So what's the moral really of the like story, that. Lucy? <laughs> Don't always think it's working, let me make it work better yeah. when what you've got works really well. Yeah. It is lovely, yeah. really nice. But you see, I'm sweating in both of them now because this is acrylic and makes me sweat, and the other one is just wool and heavy and itchy and makes Can't me sweat. Can't bear so. itchy clothes. <sighs> okay, next. White jackets. Yes. Now, opposite of the white coat, which I bought the expensive one first, white jackets, I've always bought white blazes from Zara, and I love buying them from Zara. And I traditionally, Lucy, I bought the cape first in white, which quite a few of you might have bought. They did the black white. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I bought one with the fluted sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then the, both those felt like I'd moved on, so I went for a classic blazer. 90% of the time, wear this over my shoulders, because I just love that look. It gives me arm movement. If I'm sweaty, this is not a uh, breathing fabric, so I, I, I kind of don't want to be constricted. Yeah. But it looks good like that. Yeah. That's right, I don't know what you noticed. There's no shape. The buttons are quite high. Yeah. The buttons themselves look a bit cheap. A little bit, yeah. Sleeve length. Yeah. Lapels. Yeah. I had also noticed all those things. Yes. Which made me think one day I will buy a really beautiful white off white blazer. Yeah, okay. And then Victoria Beckham, let's go back to that old Ooh. chestnut, had a sale and I bought this one. So I'll show you the off the shoulder moment. It's a little bit more ecru than mm -hmm. white, which yeah. as my hair has got blonder, I can wear more. Yes. But off the shoulder, it's lovely. Yes. Beautiful. The fabric is different. It's fine gabardine, wool gabardine. But yeah. like I've worn this in 90 degrees with this top underneath and because I've got some aeration and a sort of floppy white trouser, it's a perfect traveling outfit. I mean, I can, I can hear the quality. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a funny comment, Lucy. <laughs> Um, you, can, you that is just screaming. You can hear the quality. I can hear the quality of that fabric. Yeah. You can hear the thickness. Yeah. But the cut of the sleeve, the yeah. length where the buttons are, yeah. um, the length of the pocket and how low down they sit. Yeah. The back. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was in the sole sale, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Two. Two hundred maybe. It was mm -hmm. probably originally eight, like three. Eight hundred. Yeah. So two hundred. Would you wear it done up? I could wear it done up. I've never worn a blazer done up, but actually this shape. Yeah. I Why could. don't you wear blazers done up? If things are done up, it gives a blockiness yeah. and it exaggerates the length of my torso. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. And if I have it undone, you see where I want to deceive you that my waist is, because my waist is down here, but I'm making my waist here with high waist trousers. So you think, oh, Trini has longer legs. Yeah. I thought this was the Zara one, this is me and M, but I had three skirts like this from Zara. But the thing is, what I've loved about this is that sort of concertina skirt, the colour, it is longer. But what I didn't like is the fabric. I actually don't love chiffon. I actually know that as I go down this path of life, chiffon is an ageing fabric for me to wear in my 50s. Chiffon needs fresh, taut skin. Right. It okay. just does. Okay. I just have this thing, like when I see people in their 50s with a chiffon dress, and I just feel no. Oh, okay, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, I feel no. I yeah. feel get a structure fabric, be sleeveless, show your skin or not your skin, but chiffon, shearlessness, sheer chiffon over skin, I think it can be so aging and in black, it's a killer. In the meantime, this inspired me for something else I was actually given, but I love and prefer. Okay. So this, I was sent by the designer of Eric Bompard, who has followed Trini London and me for a year since she wanted to send it to me. And I was so happy to send it to me. I wore it, if you remember, in Italy when I was on holiday with Charles. Why I love this so much and why I actually love it over the me and M is I love the fabric, it's cashmere, mm -hmm. which is divine. Yeah. But also one of the first things I ever bought that to me was a designer item when I was 16 was going into 
Benetton and they had matching twin sets with concertina pleated skirts. Oh, sweet. In this yellow. Gorgeous. So it brings back this nostalgic memory of me at 16 with my best friend Sam Tartante who lived in Italy and she got it and bought it back. She had one in yellow and one in purple and I fell in love. Oh. So anyway, I prefer this and I just, so I will actually get rid of the other one now. Yeah. Two more and then we're done. I had this as a sequin top, which I loved and wore endlessly. And I'm going to show you what it's like. It's too tight. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show you this one and I'm going to ask you which was the designer and which was the dupe. Okay. So this is the first one. Yeah. Very well worn. Yeah. And then we'll show you the other one. Ooh. Ooh. -hoo -hoo. Which is more so that's tough because I was thinking, oh, the sleeves are long, so it's probably the other one, but these sleeves are long and there's a little detail to them. Well, one of them is MSG, MSG. <laughs> and it was about like 450 quid. Okay. And the other one is probably 29.99 from H&M. Never. This one. Never. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Basically, this one is newer, all right. <gasps> okay. But what's so unusual is it's a really high street, high street, and the sleeves are so long. They didn't compromise, Lucy. And what I will actually do is I might get that like with a little thing here. But it's quite nice actually like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's really nice. Mm. Is that recent? This is last year. Yeah. Okay. But the problem with this one is that it's been made with polyester and the other one was made with silk. So I don't sweat in the other one uh, and I will sweat in this. Okay. That's the difference. This is my yellow suit moment. To find a yellow suit is easier today weirdly because it's a very popular colour and it was a Pantone colour of the year but when I first got this ASOS suit which must have been about six years ago or yeah. five years ago I'd never seen the yellow suit and I was so excited and the shape was not perfect for me because it's a little bit deep in its thing like look there's the crotch and that's where it comes up to. Yeah. I wear it loose so the crotch feels low so that the trousers can make my legs look short. Yes. It was long the trouser legs but they broke at a bad length so I made them crop ankle crop. Yeah. How do you feel about the buttons because I know that you you don't like black and yellow. I know, but I never took them off because I felt oddly it gave a grounding to the suit. Yeah. I mean, I could have put silver buttons on, but I don't know. No, I, I quite like them actually. Yeah. I just wondered if you had an opinion. Yeah, this small amount of black, mm -hmm. because neon and black can work as yeah. an accent. Okay. But I think if it's daffodil and black, it doesn't. I think neon's the only kind of yellow that I think is works well with black. Yeah. So that's this suit. So I had, you know, that little, inkling of I want a yellow suit and then we were doing a big photo shoot for Trini London where I needed to find a yellow suit and I put this on I just felt this is not sharp enough yes for the shoot yeah so then we got a yellow suit <gasps> so then I got this oh there's such a huge difference I know there's a huge difference and in photography phenomenal it's by an Australian Alex Perry and he's a fantastic designer so I'm just going to say cut as a jacket sublime it ends at my waist even closed it works yeah it does all right so like this I did so many shots like this loved it a few little details so there's no pockets and I really like to put my hands in my pockets mm -hmm. the fabric's very thin so anything you tuck into it shows so I have to wear magic pants with it yeah when I wear magic pants with this you can tell I see the line there. Oh, I see. This is the problems with the suit. I just caught a glimpse of myself in the back and I've even taken these trousers in, but I felt, my God, it looks like I'm wearing a nappy. And from the side. Oh yeah. Do you see, it's like I'm wearing a nappy. There was even more of that. It was like I was wearing a big nappy and then we took it in a bit, but still the construction of the trousers is really bad. Okay. That to me is not a good look. Is that because the, the fabric has stretched? I don't know because I haven't worn the trousers that much because I only wear the trousers when I wear a coat over it. Yeah. And you just see it from the front. I just don't know how you would cut that to be the style. Yeah, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Yeah. I nearly want to, when I go to Australia, say, can I come see you, Alex? Because he's done the suit in every colour and it's a beautiful suit. The cut of the jacket, however, it's fantastic. It's, it's great. Beautiful. Good. Yeah. Great. And that I think, waist. Did you take that in or did it? No, this came like this. So wow. I think what I'll do is I'll use the jacket and I think I've just got to dump the trousers unless I wear it like this. I think you have to wear it only yeah. like that. But the thing is, even then. But we have a top we layer underneath now. And also you don't want to layer something with this. You want that sharpness. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone would notice particularly, but if you're aware of it. Beautiful designer doesn't use really expensive fabrics when they make them really expensive clothes. And the cut of the trouser is only for somebody who's like a model with a high bum and everything's in place. Yeah, yeah. But the jacket is sublime. 
Which suit do I wear more? Yeah. The ASOS one times 10. Wow. So Lucy, let's talk about what we're gonna do next week. I think it's appropriate that next week we could do one, which to me is called Ageless Cool. Yes. But I think that's yes. appealing for any person over 30. Yeah. 35 maybe, who, over 35. Who doesn't want to be cool? Hey, well, because I think people in their 20s are still experimenting and whatever they might do is cool. That's true. Like whatever Molly does is cool. She yes. experiments, she knows her style too. She did work in fashion a bit. But I feel what Demima wears is cool. You know, whereas I think you get to a certain age where what I define as ageless cool, you have to very carefully construct it because you don't, it doesn't just happen. You've got to kind of think, what are the little tips and tricks that you need to think about when you're dressing for ageless cool? Yes, I'll prepare for that. All right, well, you'll be interviewing me for it, so I'll see you yeah. next week. Bye. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Bye. Molly. Bye.